Hey everybody, it's me, Asinelos, and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to Reddit. Welcome to r slash pro revenge, an amazing place where people get the revenge they deserve. Now, this will be a slightly shorter video because you guys have been telling me in the comments that you have some problems. And to be honest, I agree with you. So I want to change a few things. So first of all, big problem was Echo. Hopefully, hopefully today the Echo is gone. But then comes the second problem, is my microphone, which to be honest is... You can probably hear how uh, good it is, so I will be looking for a new microphone. If you know of any good mics for a decent price, then make sure to tell me down below. I'll be going through them because I want to improve this audio. I want you to enjoy my videos, so I'm really looking for feedback from you guys. Then the last thing today is I want to change the format of my videos a little, so at the moment I've sort of had the whole Reddit comment and then I go down through it. What I'm changing today is I'm taking the Reddit comment and cropping it out and putting it on the screen paragraph by paragraph like I know a lot of other Reddit YouTubers do. So tell me down below if you like that or not, also leave any other suggestions down below. And with that said, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enjoy the video. Coworker gets me fired. My many years waiting for revenge. If revenge is best served cold, then my revenge was many years in the freezer. And this week was finally pulled out and had whipped cream and a cherry put on top before finally served. The background. So I worked for company A for almost a decade that had a small team consisting of 10 people doing commissioned work for businesses in my city. The owner treated us like family knowing that we worked long and hard days, sometimes up to 60 hours in a week. He paid us better than expected. Bonuses and perks he negotiated with businesses that commissioned our work, even gave the whole company a week off, all paid, when his son was getting married so we could attend it. We had our squabbles, like any other family, and things weren't always bright and perfect, but this is to show how nice owner treated his employees, and didn't screw me over. After working there for years, the manager position came open. Since by then, I was one of the most senior workers with Company A, so I thought I would apply, which had a few others interested to do as well. I didn't get the position, mainly because, despite my experience at Company A, I didn't have a business administration degree. Someone who worked for owner did, so he got it. Realising the education I would have to get and the demand of this job, I fought long and hard, and concluded that if I wanted to go anywhere in life, I would have to get that degree. Coming right out of high school to work for Company A was great, but if I wanted to do something more, I would have to go to university. I talked to the owner and gave my two weeks notice. When I explained what I wanted to do and why, he understood that I was trying to make something of myself. This all becomes relevant later, I promise. Going to university, I found I had tuition covered through government grants but not things like food, rent, etc. So I looked around and eventually found work at Company B. Company B was a retail store with a bigger staff than I had been used to, somewhere around 50 employees, but had such a huge employee turnaround that it was scary at times. They dealt with a wider range of goods, from groceries to very expensive items. They had a certain niche clientele that they could order items for and catered to. I ended up working part-time in their warehouse and answered to the warehouse supervisor, who answered to the manager. There were other supervisors for other parts of the store, but for this, only the sales supervisor is relevant. Skip forward seven years. In that time, I got my BA degree and worked at Company B the whole time, going from part-time to full-time, and eventually applied for the warehouse supervisor position. I was interviewed, got the job, been supervisor for months when the manager and I hired Kay as a warehouse clerk. Kay isn't the one to get the revenge, but she played a crucial part in the revenge. Then B gets hired. B started out as a cashier, working quickly up the chain and brown nosing as many co workers as possible, including the manager. When a sales rep went on maternity leave, B quickly jumped at the chance to work in sales and ended up permanently being a part of that team. Then, the sales supervisor soon after. Me and B got along like oil and water. We butted heads over things constantly. She would tell the manager all the small things that I did, 
but called me a snitch when I reported the issues she was causing. She would badmouth me and my warehouse staff, talk over me at meetings, and try to take credit for my ideas. She openly told co-workers that I was the cause of many issues and couldn't wait for me to leave. Oh, and she was never at fault. It would be the customer's fault, my fault, the delivery driver's fault, another co-worker's fault, etc. There were times when we got together well, but far and few between. I get fired. So one day, a very, and I mean very expensive ring set, over $5,000 I found out later, ordered by one of our customers comes in. Years ago, I set up a procedure for any type of jewellery so that it will not get lost or stolen. The last step is, once we have done everything with it in the warehouse, we take it to the office and have someone put it in the safe immediately. This particular time, I was the one who received the ring. So once going through the procedure, told Kay that I was taking it to the office. The only one available who had the combination to the safe was B. I asked her if she could open the safe. She looked at me, looked at the jewellery box in my hand, then said, Put it down here on my desk. I'll put it away once I'm done with this email. Keep in mind that me and the B had had a serious spat over something earlier that day, and I generally didn't feel like being close to her if I could help it so I never saw her put it in the safe myself. The next day, I get a call from the manager to come to the office. I head there to find manager, B, and the HR consultant. They pull in when some real poop hits the fan. Manager tells me that said ring set has disappeared. I tell them the procedure I followed, and last I saw them was with B. Manager tells me that B checked the box and said the box was empty. Manager then pulls out the box, Sure enough, the box the rings were in was indeed empty. I swear to the manager that the rings were inside when I checked them before given to B. At this point, it's my word against hers. By stroke of bad luck, the in-store video recorder had broken down days before the incident, so there was no way to verify what happened. We all know someone has to take the blame for this, and that's when B strikes, saying that it was my fault since it was last seen in my hands. Manager asks if this is true, then I realise that, yes, I was indeed the last person to touch the thing, and I never actually saw B pick up the box. B gives me the look of that screamed, gotcha! Manager and the HR consultant ask us both to leave. After what seemed like forever, I get called in. Manager tells me that since I was responsible for the rings at the time, and now they're lost, they would be firing me. But since they had no proof as to whether I stole the rings or not, they wouldn't press charges. Which scared the poop out of me, as this was the first time I heard of them thinking this. I go back to the warehouse, tell Kay and the other warehouse clerks just what happened, grabbed my personal belongings, and left that day. After a couple of weeks of trying to get my head around what happened and weighing my options, I decide my first priority is to try to get some sort of job. And consider it lucky if I get a job flipping burgers with the bad rep when they ask Company B. I call the owner of Company A to get a good reference from them and explain what happened and why I was calling, only to get the shock of a lifetime. The manager position was about to open. The guy who I lost the position to was retiring soon due to complicated health reasons. Owner had kept tabs on me while at university and understood when I didn't immediately come back to him. But with a golden opportunity like this, he wanted me back, and I wasn't going to say no. I dive into my new job I originally wanted, with an owner I enjoyed working for. I thought, then and there, everything would be behind me. Not knowing it would come back. Not to bite me, but to pay dividends. The Revenge, Kay's side. This I found out after B's reckoning. After I was fired, Kay knew she had to do something about B. Kay knew that I wouldn't lose or steal something like the rings, but also knew that, without proof, B would deny that she did it and even have Kay in her crosshairs to attack next. So after talking with her husband, she hatched a plan. She started hanging out with B, telling her things like, I'm so glad he's gone, or wish he had been fired much earlier. B, feeling high from getting rid of one of her thorns in her side, soaked it all in and after a couple of weeks invited Kay and Kay's husband, from now on KH, for drinks at her place, with her and B's husband, BH. 
Months passed. K and KH do things regularly together with B and BH, including drinking on weekends and couple-related events. When together, K would occasionally badmouth me, and B would agree. Finally, after over a year of playing nice, when K and KH were over at B's for one of their drinking parties, K randomly badmouthed me, mentioning the rings in passing. Then B says something that K was waiting for. I wanted those rings, so I stole them. K, hearing this, asks for more details. KH looks at her, tries to wave her off with one hand, then gives up when B keeps talking. That day, B had stopped writing her email and was going to put the rings in the safe. The safe was open and she was about to put the rings away, when B had an idea. See, as mentioned above, B wanted me gone from company B. She also wanted those rings. She also knew that the cameras weren't working. She figured that she could pocket the rings, tell the manager they were missing, and spin it so I would take the blame. K then asks, where are the rings now? And B, being too drunk and not seeing a reason not to brag, not only tells her, but shows her where they are in her room. All while KH had been recording the whole conversation on his phone. The hand waving was him saying he started recording. K gives a copy of the recording to manager the next workday. Police are called immediately. B is arrested and her house is raided. They find the rings. K and KH give the recording and testimonies to police. B's reckoning has begun. The revenge from my side. I get a call from the prosecutor's office after B is arrested and charged with theft over $5,000, among other things. He wants me to testify about what she did to me. I didn't skip a beat in saying yes. Fast track to the trial. Prosecutor has me, K, and KH testify and plays the recording of B admitting that she stole them. Her attorney tries to throw out the case, saying that K got B deliberately drunk, but judge didn't buy it since there was proof she drank all the time. Judge was lenient and gave her five years in prison, which she yelled was unfair, but I personally thought she got off easy. Meanwhile, as the trial was happening, I was talking with a lawyer to sue B for setting me up like she did. We were also going to sue Company B for wrongful termination, but they settled the day they got notice of the lawsuit and knew they would lose. B wasn't so lucky. They tried some trickery by having BH divorce her, and he received everything in the divorce, but my lawyer added him into the lawsuit as well. The lawyer asked overall for $3,500 for emotional distress, back pay from when I was fired, until I started up with Company A again, and legal fees. And now you're wondering where the metaphoric cherry is on this story? Well, recently, we had someone leave Company A, so we were hiring someone to replace them. Owner was going over the resumes and set up interviews for the job this week. Lo and behold, B was one of the people to apply, but he didn't know that. I looked at the resume, was about to trash it, but then smiled. Owner set up the interview. She came in at her slotted time, looking to brown nose her way through. Then she saw me. I smiled an evil smile. She went white. All I said was, Ah, B, how are you? Remember me? A deer in the headlight look from her. I look at her resume and say, I'm sorry, I don't think you'll be a good fit for our company. Thank you for applying. She said not one word and left. Wow, that was quite the story. Who would have expected so many coincidences, so many opportunities, so many little twists, and B getting absolutely destroyed. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit shorter than usual, but as I said at the beginning, make sure to leave your feedback down below. I really want to improve this channel so that you guys like it, so that you guys want to watch it, so definitely tell me what I can do for that to happen. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later, guys.